Power creep is a very interesting discussion when it comes to the Pokemon TCG. Now, to catch those up who don't know what power creep is, let me explain it very briefly. It is the increase in power level over time for Pokemon TCG competitive cards. So one of the main factors that can help you identify power creep in the formats is HP. So HP would go from a 130 to a basic at some point in time, all the way up to a 180, which we have seen uh, in more recent sets. Or an even bigger example would be the introduction to two prime and free prize Pokemon that would be EX, GX, Vs and V Maxes and tag teams as well that can really hit crazy numbers. I believe the highest one we've seen so far is 340 HP and that of course is without any sort of modification to health. Now although you could tell Pokemon tried to balance this out by giving away more prizes for KOing bigger HP and more powerful Pokemon it's actually resulted in a standard format now that is incredibly fast yet incredibly boring. I mean, no one really wants to play a very competitive game where you just smack smack win. No one really likes that. People want to strategize and actually try and get themselves out of a rut if they do fall behind or if they do get ahead. They want to make sure their board state's in a very comfortable position so they can try and, you know, win the game. But if you're losing a game from turn one and you're almost guaranteed to lose, it's not fun. You know, it's turn one, set up or die. I've said it so many times. It's very, very true. If you're playing a top tier deck and you don't get the setup going, you lose. Now, I know you could say that about any sort of game. Well, if you don't set up, you lose. But it, let's say in a more hypothetical scenario of single prize or single turn formats, let's say, if you don't set up turn one, it's not the end of the world. You can still catch up, which allows a lot more forgiveness for the type of decks you're playing and allows for a lot more creativity. It's like, the, it's, now it's like the deck has to be dead perfect or it's busted. It's just not gonna work. So not only are we now now limiting the decks we can play we're also limiting the time we play and the enjoyment of playing the game let's be real the most fun you've ever had i would assume is coming back from losing that is fun that is incredible to be able to work your way out of a sticky situation and actually win the game is incredibly rewarding the way things are now that's a far unlikely thing to happen you know it does happen don't get me wrong but it's just far more unlikely it's like you're almost scooping at the point in which where your opponent sets up well because how are you going to come back with a massive vmax on the other side of that um that table and he's just coming at you fully charged up ready to go and you're, sl you're slacking behind you just lose it's really hard but it's not just about that it's about the pace of the game if you don't have much time to play you don't have much time to strategize and then the enjoyment goes that's where we enjoy the, the competitive side of the game is the strategy being able to outwit your opponent to win the game is so so rewarding now, I know I've complained a lot about power creep here, but we need to understand why it exists in the first place. And I have a few ideas myself, nothing confirmed, because you don't really know unless it comes from the horse's mouth, but these are my ideas at least. The first idea would be obvious, sales, right? Now, I was watching a video by Tricky Jim where he said he doesn't really understand that, and I completely get it because, of course, if you're talking about a collector's side of things, the HP and stuff and the power creep of it doesn't really matter because there's Charizards out there from way back, even base set, well, yes, base set, that are highly valuable so clearly if you want to increase sales of packs then power creep does nothing but what i think it is at least this is my theory is it's a, a tried and tested strategy that they've just not changed since um since the days they actually started power creep and we're going back to the early 2000s here when i was younger and i would get packs and open them up i didn't really care about how good the card was i just looked at numbers and I thought, oh my god, I remember having a Lugia EX card um, from, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's quite, a, it's quite a rare one now. But I believe it had like 200 HP and I was loving that. The fact that it was 200 HP, I was like, wow, this is powerful. 200 HP and then you look at the attack and there's 100 odd damage. Like, jeez, this is insane. I didn't care about the fact that it had like a fire, lightning, water attack. I didn't care about that. It was just ridiculous. I loved it. It was my favorite card. So the fact that that card was my favorite over, let's say, a more genuinely competitively viable card, it proves the point that when you're younger, you don't really care about that stuff. You just look at big numbers and, and pretty pictures. And that makes sense. Look at the VMAXs. The VMAXs have the alt arts, of course, that are rare and they're more very, very beautiful cards. And then you have the massive HP. Um, I tried and tested this. I showed my son a card that I had. Um, and again, it was exactly the same reaction. It was Whoa, it was the test tube Mewtwo GX. It's like, whoa, 190 HP. Actually, I think it was 200 HP, but I don't, I don't know. And he was like, wow, that's really powerful. And then he sees a Pokemon with 210. 
And he's like, oh my god, that's more powerful than Mewtwo. The first thing he's thinking is, the best card is the one with the highest HP and the damage output as well. So it makes sense on a sales standpoint when your target audience is children. We have to bear that in mind. We have to be honest with ourselves. The target audience is children. Then if children are responding like that, then power creep is gonna happen. And then of course, there's the other idea on the competitive side where you're not really gonna play a card unless obviously it's better than the cards that already exist. So you're gonna have to print more powerful cards to encourage competitive players to buy packs or purchase these singles online um, and therefore play them. So yeah, they're gonna do power creep because of course, if they make a card more playable, then you're gonna have more sales. But they figured out some sort of formula here when it comes to generating sales for their packs. It's uh, rarity, it's power creep, and also um, competitive viability. If a set has a large amount of cards with competitive viability, has really, really high secret rares, and is a game changer overall, then you're probably more likely to see that go out of stock uh, quicker than other packs that have released with less of an impactful set. At least that's my theory behind it. I don't know, it hasn't been tested so you know bear that in mind now you might say well wh what about rotation the reason rotation exists is for that very purpose right we rotate so we get rid of the old cards and we play with the new cards why would they need power creep if we have rotation well rotation is a little awkward at times sometimes in rotation you cross between completely separate formats right you have a rotation of um there was like a team up a gx and v cards so it's tag team gx's standard gx's v cards v maxes in a format a, a very ugly format that did exist uh, in fact people do say it's one of the worst formats ever to exist i believe i don't know exactly what it is i think it's team up onwards at that point but i don't know it perfectly because i didn't play at that time but there are awkward formats like that where you have cards that are old mixed in with the new so if you still want to increase your sales at the point of releasing a new set then you have to increase its viability you have to print cards that are better than the old ones that are still currently in the standard format otherwise no one's gonna buy them they're like well why would i play these cards if i just have these you know the oh look we've got a new v max here but it has about 250 hp well i might as well just play tag teams no need to go and look for v max cards oh v max 320 hp oh whoa, whoa 160 damn oh wow they're hitting some good damage some good effects there i'm gonna go and look for them cards because it's way better than the cards that already exist in the standard format bang you're buying more packs so that's the idea at least the idea for power creep is generally to make more money and it makes sense they're a business they need to make money they want to make money it's a perfectly understandable reason but yes the main issue is it's affected the meta game a lot and people who play this game competitively are starting to fall off they're just not enjoying it anymore the sad reality is i have a feeling they don't really care let me explain myself. I will guarantee you they generate a lot more sales from collectors than players. Now, it's great that there is a competitive scene for the game and they clearly do support it. Obviously, they have tournaments that are broadcasted on Twitch and they, they actually do listen to players of the game. I don't think it's they don't care in that regard, but we're the side of the of the, the card game that makes them the, le the least amount of money, I would expect. And I know there are people who go from collecting to playing or go from playing to collecting. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. I don't think it's as simple as you play or you collect. Um, I think players do collect. So, you know, we are still a part of that, that audience there. But the competitive players are a lot more of a niche audience compared to the collectors. So they're gonna prioritize the collectors over the competitive players when it comes to sales. And again, that's what power creep would go for. And I know again, you're saying, but collectors don't need power creep. Why do you need to do that? Again, it's back to the idea that the strategy is that if they increase the power, they're more likely to generate sales in general. Um, I, th I think that's really, it. I know it's kind of contradictory, but that's, I'm not supporting the argument. I'm more saying, I think that's what it is, even though it doesn't make sense. Simply saying that, it's a tried and tested strategy. So it's more of an idea, at least in my head, I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I think it's that idea where it's been proven before, so they don't change it. They just keep going with it. And I think now it's kind of an outdated idea. And I think they're starting to pay attention to that now, um, where you have these V stars coming out, <coughs> which are stage, effectively stage one Vs that don't give up free prizes and have less HP. So clearly they've figured it out that V maxes are not very good for the game um and maybe they're not as popular on a collector's side as well but that's again just an idea i know for a fact that v maxes are far less popular than general let's say gx's or v's i'm not sure about the uh the collection side though because i don't collect <laughs> so my idea is that uh, they might be paying attention now and they might have reduced this power stuff to 
I, I, and we are knowing as well that they aren't printing any more VMAXs. So again, that's another sign that they're paying attention to this power creep issue, at least for now, which is nice. And I guess they're trying it out. You know, they might be at a point where they sit there and go, do you know what, let's, let's cut off VMAXs. Let's get rid of free prizes. Let's stick to two prize Pokemon and just make them good looking <laughs> and make them good enough for a metagame for uh, people to want to play them um, and see how it goes. So it's going to be interesting to see because Brilliant Stars is a change in direction for um, this current format we're in and for Power Creep. We have to see if they keep doing it though. So now it's really a matter of time to see how it goes. We know Power Creep has existed, we know it is a problem, and we know it's making an incredibly unbalanced format on the competitive side. Are they paying attention? It looks like it, we just have to wait and see. I hope this has provided you with a little bit of information um, about Power Creep, what it is and why it's not liked, um, and why I think Pokemon are making their changes for it, as well as why it exists. Um, if there's any ideas that you have about it, why it exists, um, or what could be done about it right now, um, then let me know in the comments. I'll actually be, yeah, it'd be nice to know. As you can tell, this video isn't scripted. This is all off the top of the head, so there's going to be a lot of points bouncing left to right here. Um, but, you know, I just thought I'd come across, give you the idea of, of Power Creep, why it exists, and why people don't like it, um, and why I'm not a fan of it. So, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now and leave it there. So, look, do leave a like if you did enjoy that video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.